Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 16th March 2022. So let us have a brief introduction regarding the topics. So first it is regarding Bharatanatyam in Indian diplomacy. So it is regarding India's stand on Russia-Ukraine issue. So this is important from your international relations which mainly comes in a GS paper too. And next topic is regarding growing price pressures. So in today's lecture we saw there is increasing of retail inflation as well as wholesale price inflation. So regarding this one editorial which appeared in today's newspaper, so it is important from our economy. And next topic it is regarding India's solar capacity. So here we are going to talk about mainly the challenges regarding India's solar capacity and what are the milestones we reached. So this topic I took from uh, context, text and context. Uh, okay, so this is important from art, science and technology. In the art, science and technology, we can study this topic under renewable and non-renewable sources. And next one is an accidental missile launch. So it is regarding India and Pakistan. Okay, so India accidentally launched uh, one missile. So this accidentally landed in Pakistan territory. So this article it is important from your international relations which mainly comes in a GS paper too. And next topic it is about Karnataka High Court verdict on hisab. Okay actually there are many articles in today's newspaper which is talking about some concerns regarding this Karnataka High Court verdict. So we are going to see what is that and what is the background etc. And next topic it is regarding United Nations resolution focuses only on one religion says India. Okay, so it is talking about is International Day regarding Islam so, and this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And now let us try to talk about the today's quote. So if you are talking about the today's quote, so it is a motivational quote. So success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is courage to continue that counts. Okay. So here this uh, quote which mainly says that whenever you are getting success it is not final. So even after clearing this UPSC you need to enter into the services. So this services will be the one of the important challenging tasks than compared to that of preparation of, for this UPSC examination. And failure it is not fatal thing and it is a courage to continue. You have to come back and you have to continue. So this is mainly about your courage. So courage it is a one thing that mainly counts but not the success not the failure okay so this is about this quote and now let us try to see first topic it is regarding Bharatanatyam in Indian diplomacy so actually I said this article which mainly talking about Dikshit principle so you need to know who is this Dikshit and what is the principle and we need to understand how we came up with changing of our foreign policy according to the changing the times. So this article, as I said, it is important from your international relations. So if you're talking about who is this Dikshit, right? So the late Jyotindrana Dikshit, he took over as foreign secretary on December 1st, 1991. And he retired 26 months later. That is by January 1994, he retired. And 58 years was then the retirement age of that person. Okay, so he was foreign secretary and he joined in 1991 so if you're talking about republics and moscow at that time so during 1990s and 1991 we saw there was disintegration of this ussr so why disintegration there are a number of reasons which mainly says for the disintegration of this ussr so you will be studying about this topic in your world history right and even that topic will come under post-independent India as well. So that post-independent India, so we need to know about, so what is the foreign policy with Russia after disintegration, that is in after 1990s. So here if you are talking about the Soviet Union General Secretary, at that time he was Mikhail Gorbachev, he resigned at that time. So after resignation of this United Nations Security uh, Secretary, okay, United Nations uh, General Secretary, so the flag of this United Union of Soviet Socialist Russian Republic, that is USSR, was lowered for the first time. So for the first time, this USSR flag was lowered, 
and the next day the disintegration of this USSR which mainly happened formally so after disintegration 15 republics they emerged so now it is a one of the important challenge for India to maintain proper relations with these 15 countries okay so India accepted the challenge and it mainly set about opening of new embassies and India is mainly trying to build some new relationship in these countries okay and not only in this USSR disintegrated areas but even in Central Asia South Caucasus and even in the Central Europe so we are having some challenges to maintain proper traditional ties right and in January 1992 India and Israel also established a full diplomatic relations okay and we came with announcing of opening of embassies and exchanging of ambassadors for the first time with Israel in year 1992 and that led to opening of door to relationship that has blossomed into one of in India's most significant strategic partnership in the last three decades so what happened if you're talking about India Israel so formally we came with relations with Israel in 1992 and in 1992 we came with establishment of diplomatic relations and we came with uh, announcing of opening of embassies and as well as exchanging of ambassadors for the first time with Israel and later on what happened these relations which mainly grew develop, uh, developed day by day and now already we know that India is still which is one of the important strategic partner for India from the last three decades onwards. So on January 1992, our Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao also participated in the first ever meeting of United Nations Security Council, that is United Nations UNSC, at the summit level for the first time. Our Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao who participated, and this was held in year 1992. And at that time, we decided that world is changing. So, and also we need to move towards other countries to maintain a formal relations and good relationship. So, actually, after this 1960s, we went, we ent we entered into this Cold War. So, in this Cold War, there were two power blocks which mainly formed. On one side, we have USA and second side, we have USSR. Okay, and India came with this non-alignment movement said that we are going to focus on economic development, poverty, hunger that are very much important challenges that we need to face. So here we came with this non-alignment movement and we said that we are not going to align either with USA or USSR. Right. So this was the thing which mainly happened during this Cold War time. And at that time we came with identification of issues regarding nuclear proliferation and as well as disarmament. Okay, okay, the first meeting which mainly took place during Mr. Dakshit, Mr. Dikshit, he visit to uh, he went to a visit for this uh, Washington, and after that we came with a continu uh, dialogue that continued through ups and downs between USA and as well as India, and later on we came with this U.S. Civil Nuclear Cooperation Agreement in 2008, that is between India and USA, and later on if you are talking about Asian Summit, which mainly held in 1992. So our Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao, he came up with this look east policy and he started to shape our India and as well as the Asian embarked sectoral uh, dialogue partnership. Okay. So in this 1992 also our uh, P. V. Narasimha Rao, he mainly came with idea of this look east policy and he won he mainly began to shape India and even some Asian okay regarding some dialogue based partnership between this India and as well as ASEAN. So by the end of 1995 okay so by the end of 1995 so whatever the relationship that is present between India and ASEAN that led to development and even we had a full dialogue partnership and in 1996 India joined security dialogue platform okay so that platform is ASEAN regional forum. And since 2002, the relationship also had been strengthened further with annual Indian uh, Asian Summit. Okay, so after, by uh, with 1992, we came with these relations and by 2002, there is strengthening of these relations which may be seen. And we are having this annual Asian India Summit annually, right? And if you're talking about China and Taiwan, so even our Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao, he visited China. So actually, we saw Indochina war that happened in year 1962. So after this Indochina war that happened, so that led to decreasing or all time low relationship between India and China. So after this Indochina war, the first time 
our prime minister that is our pv narsimha rao he mainly visited china in year september in year 1993 in september and in this meet the two sides they initiated first of many conference building measures and we also came up with some agreement regarding maintenance of peace and tranquility across this lac region okay and as well as even some indo china border areas and finally they led to foundation of relationship between these two countries from last two decades onwards okay and even india and taiwan they also negotiated to open economic and as well as cultural centers okay centers we need to open this economic and as well as cultural centers and taiwan which mainly opened its office first in mumbai in 1992 and later on it mainly shifted its uh, office from uh, mumbai to delhi here and later on we also came with this india taipei association office in 1995 right so in this way here if you see these examples then we can understand easily so the indian diplomacy which is mainly changing by time to time and we are adapting to the change that we that needed if you are talking about recent russia ukraine crisis so regarding this united nations resolution which mainly passed by america but this resolution which not at all signed by india so india mainly abstained from voting regarding this uh, russia ukraine issue so this is one cause of concern here okay so indian government which mainly chosen to abstain based on assessment of its core interest so if you are talking about abstinence means we are not going for giving out or we are rejecting that resolution so we are very much silent so whenever there is abstainment that is seen here so especially western countries they mainly said that new delhi tra tra traditional ties with russia is there so it is not voting against this russia and russia should also feel satisfied because india didn't vote against this actions of russia okay so this is the gist of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding inflation so what is inflation whenever there is increasing of price or can i say price rise of goods and services in the market yes so let me know what are the causes for inflation in the comment box so if you are talking about this article which is uh, mainly talking about inflation so inflation in india which mainly continues on worrying trend there is increasing of inflation that is mainly seen and cpi consumer price index which is all time 8 month high and not only this retail prices but even wholesale prices are also very much high and if you talk about data which is given in this article it mainly says that february's headline wpi inflation it is increased to 13.11 percent each and retail inflation which mainly remains stuck above rbi's upper tolerance threshold of 6 percent each for the second month and the food price inflation which may like we can do 5.85 percent each so this uh, data which mainly says that yes wpi that is wholesale price index also had been increased and retail inflation which is also very much high okay and retail inflation which mainly reached this upper limit or upper threshold limit of rbi that is 6 percentage so what is a 6 percentage so here inflation targeting in india it is 4 plus or minus 2 that means we can say like 2 to 6 percentage and the price greens in this a key protein source is also very much high example meat fish etc there is 200 basis points of increasing of price that is mainly seen okay and even because of this inflation oil fats they are also having some inflationary effect that that leads to increasing of prices right and because of abrupt disruption of supply of this edible oils so actually if you are talking about edible oil normally we will be using sunflower oil so in our house we will be using only sunflower oil okay i don't know whether you are you are using the sunflower oil or not but we are using sunflower oil so it is one of the edible oil so what happened so actually the important source of this sunflower oil that we are getting okay to india it is from ukraine so because of this uh, russia ukraine crisis there was disruption of supply chain that is mainly seen regarding this sunflower oil so because of this it will be having some negative impact on this on this sunflower oil so there might be rise of this uh, 
prices of the sunflower oil that is mainly seen in the market and with the price gains in clothing and footwear even fuel lights transportation communication they all are running well above eight percentage levels so if you're talking about one interesting thing i can say here is recently food wear which mainly added in gst which is of high slab that is 18 percentage so if you want to go for buying of any pair of shoes or any pair of chappas you have to pay this 18 percentage of gst on that right and the overall trend in this retail inflation is now clearly broad based across this consumption categories and as well as this concertingly way above this tolerance levels okay so whatever the inflation that we can see so this inflation which is mainly crossing the sub limit of this rbi and it is mainly showing some disconcern okay disconcern because and it is also having some impact on tolerance level as well and next stop if you see this point it mainly says that because of a rise of this international prices so what happened there is increasing of transport communication sector prices as well so because of this that is linked to transport and communication inflation so this is one important thing and next one is last month's producer price of economy basket which mainly shows inflation in the fuel and power category of this wholesale price index was 31.5 percentage so not only the food prices even inflation regarding this fuel and power category is also very much high so here government need to take some essential step to control this price rise in the market okay so this is the gist of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding india solar capacity milestones and challenges so if you see this image actually uh, actually i think uh, three or four days ago i showed you this image in our hindu display so i added this image because i found it interesting that so there is one solar tree okay solar trees are going to be installed in in andhra pradesh so because of this this is a news and now let's try to understand this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that india added a record of 10 gigawatts of solar energy to its cumulative installed capacity in 2021 so in 2021 india recorded about 10 gigawatts of solar energy and it is one of the highest okay it is one of the highest in the last one year capacity addition right and in this way i can say it is like 200 percent okay 200 percent year on year growth that we can see and this is a one of the milestone in india's journey towards generating 500 gigawatts from renewable energy by 2030 okay and of which about 30 300 gigawatts is expected to come from solar power okay so here we are having non-renewable energy and as well as renewable energy so non-renewable energy it is nothing but like energy that we are getting from fossil fuels and renewable energy means we are getting this uh, energy from either sun that is through insulation or by winds by waves etc right so here india's target it is to generate 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030 so out of which about 300 gigawatts mainly coming uh, mainly they are going to become from the solar power itself and next one is india's capacity addition which mainly ranks the country's fifth in the solar power deployment so in the solar power deployment india's position which is mainly at fifth position so if we're talking about challenges so first one is there is no proper financing for residential consumers if they want to go for solar rooftops they do not have proper financing and next one is most of the people they are mainly focusing on large scale solar photovoltaic okay voltaic cells but not they are not focusing on the solar rooftop systems this is also one cause of concern and next one is india's domestic manufacturing capacities in the solar sector to do not match to the demand for the solar power so what are the demand that is there for the solar power so these uh, solar sector companies they are not working or not mainly focusing on that right and next one is whenever we are going for using of the solar photovoltaic uh, sector which mainly continues means we are going to face some severe challenges and we need to also okay we need to also uh, 
we need also incur this land cost and high T and D losses and other inefficiencies and even some grid integration challenges as well. Okay, so this is about the gist of the topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding accidental missile launch. So already we discussed this topic number of times and let's fastly just skim through this article. So here what happened? So in our parliament, now parliament in our parliament budgetary sessions are going on. So because of this making a statement in both houses of parliament that is our Lok Sabha and as well as Rajya Sabha regarding accidental launch of supersonic missile. And the name of that missile is Brahmos missile. Okay, so now government which gave explanation. So explanation which is not accepted by Pakistan. And Pakistan which is mainly demanding for this joint probe to investigate into this issue. So what is the background? What had happened till now? On March 9th, a missile. Okay, the name of that missile is Brahmos missile. So it mainly accidentally released at around 7 p.m. from India. So, which later landed inside the country that is territory of Pakistan. So, this is the one cause of concern. So, cause of concern here is yes, accidentally we released this uh, missile and this missile which, which mainly entered into Pakistan territory and it mainly landed on this Pakistan territory. So, what is the Pakistan response? So, Pakistan says that whenever there is no proper security protocol or technical safeguards against accidental or unauthorized launch of missiles in nuclear environment okay so here pakistan mainly wants india to explain the procedure to protect this accidental missile launches and even some particular circumstances of this incident as well okay so this is about this pakistan response and now let us try to understand why pakistan's argument that India has launched a strategic nuclear weapon is incorrect. So if you are talking about how these nuclear weapons are mainly fired, so these uh, nuclear weapons which are mainly present or strategic weapons which are present, they are called as nukes or nuclear tripod missiles or nuclear tippered missiles, okay, nukes or nuclear tippered missiles and they are mainly delivered via using these ballistic missiles. But this Brahmos, it is a cruising missile. So in this context, we can say it is not a strategic nuclear weapon. And next one is the cruise missile had been launched from near Sirsa and which is a home to major air force but not army force. And next one is launch of a strategic nuclear tippered ballistic missile which mainly requires two person launch protocol. Okay, so this is about this topic. And next one is uh, we can also talk about MTCR. So MTCR is nothing but missile technology control regime. So we signed or we became signatory of this MTCR. So this MTCR which mainly works or it mainly focuses on range of missile for which several tests had been done. Okay, so this is about MTCR and even India also joined other agreements. But India didn't sign this nuclear supply group. Okay, we already signed this MTCR as well, right? So if you see further more details, it mainly says that both India and Pakistan they are nuclear weapon states. So if there is any tactic or strategic missiles which are mainly moving within these two countries, means that will be having a severe negative impact. So this is the thing which mainly said in this article. And these two articles which I took from text and context, I will be showing you at the last. And la next topic is about wearing hijab. Hijab it is nothing but Muslim uh, girls which who mainly cover their face with one cloth that is called as hijab. Wearing hijab is not essential part of religion. So this is the thing which mainly said by Karnataka High Court. So if you see this infographic, then you can understand easily the timeline. So what happened? So when this issue had started and now we have to add this judgment like wearing hijab it is not a essential part of the religion so if you see context it mainly says that karnataka high court which mainly upheld upheld means said yes for the ban of this wearing of hijab hijab is nothing but head scarf which is mainly wear by women okay women or children who are girls and next one is it here is uh, Karnataka High Court which already said that wearing hijab it is not an essential right, religious practice in Islam and therefore it mainly protected under this uh, Arctic, uh, 
this article 25 of indian constitution and this article 25 of indian constitution which mainly talks about right to freedom of religion okay so if we're talking about one article which mainly talks about right to religious freedom here is article 25 of indian constitution and court said that so whatever the fundamental rights are there in our constitution so these fundamental rights are present in the part 3 of our indian constitution so they are not absolute here state can impose reasonable restrictions right so if you see the details it mainly says that the bench also upheld the legality of karnataka government february 5th 2022 order okay so karnataka government which mainly came up with the order like they are coming up with a uh, uniforms in schools and the pre university colleges under the provisions of karnataka education act of 1983 yes and now high court which mainly upheld this act as well so if you see background it mainly says that recently the students who were wearing this hijab they were mainly banned to enter into the college in karnataka's udupi district and this issue which mainly throws light regarding legal questions on uh, freedom of uh, religion whether the right to wear a hijab it is a constitutionally protected or not so this is a question which mainly raised by this high court okay and if you are talking about how religious freedom which mainly protected under constitution so here you need to understand which are the articles talking about this religious freedom practices so article 25 sub class 1 which mainly talks about freedom of conscience and right to freely pros pros profess practice and as well as propagate religion and it is a right that which mainly guarantees a negative liberty and it mainly says that there should be no interference or obstacle to exercise this freedom but but what happen these fundamental rights are not absolute there can be some reasonable restrictions can be imposed right so if you're talking about some facts regarding this karnataka education act of 1983 so first here if you want to know about this act you need to know some important provisions then only you can appreciate this article so this act which mainly states that wear dress chosen by applicable community okay committee of administrative board of pre university colleges or some college developmental committees etc and this act which mainly provides plan development for education institutions and it mainly talks about health education practices maintenance and improvement of standards of education and they talk about better organization discipline and they talk about fostering of harmonious development of mental and as well as physical fac uh, faculties of the students okay so these are some important things which mainly talked under this karnataka education act and now let us try to see next topic is regarding united nation resolution focuses on one religion okay so now we need to talk about international day okay international day especially regarding islam so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that united nations general assembly so here unga which mean adopted a resolution so this resolution says that march 15 to be celebrated as international day to combat in islamophobia phobia means nothing but fear right so to combat this islamophobia international day to be celebrated on this march 15 so it is a resolution which mainly adopted by this united nation general assembly so actually in this context india which mainly expressed concern because if you talk about world entire globe we can see the wide range of diversity that is present not only islam not only hinduism not only christianity that is seen here so there are different religions which are mainly present and these different religious people they are living together in india right not only in india but also across the world there are different religious people they are present so if you see some details so indian uh, permanent representative he said in this general assembly that india hoped the resolution adopted does not set a precedent it will lead to multiple resolutions based on selective religions and divide the united nations into regional uh, religious camps okay so here our indian representative he mainly says that 
it does not uh, it does not set a precedent here okay so whenever we are celebrating this type of international days that will leads to multiple uh, resolutions based on selective religions and it will also leads to dividing of united nations based on this religious camps as well so if we are talking about global diversity so we are having different religious people like hindus muslims sikhs christians etc so hindus are more than 1.2 billion followers and buddhism or buddhism people they were about 535 million and sikhism include like more than 30 million spread out across the world here okay so we should not celebrate this type of uh, international days that will leads to religious phobia so even this 193 member general assembly which mainly adopted resolution which mainly introduced by this pakistan ambassador okay who his name is munir akram okay under the agenda item culture of peace and to proclaim 15th march as international day to combat islamophobia okay so following this adoption adoption of this draft resolution so from indian side india mainly condemned all acts which mainly motivated by this anti semitism christiano pedia and as well as islamophobia such phobias were not restricted to this arabic regions so arabic religions include judaism and i can say islam and as well as christianity so these were the some important arabic religions right so in this context our uh, our minister our indian side participant he mainly said that emergence of anti hindu anti buddhist anti sikh phobias that will come into future if we are going to adopt this resolution so this is the gist of this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's questions so first one it is regarding brahma samaj so first statement is it emphasized on worship and adoration of eternal unsearchable immutable being who is author and preserver of the universe okay yes the statement is correct and second one is it opposed idol worship yes and it denied teachings of veda and upanishad so it didn't deny the teachings of veda and upanishad so this second statement is incorrect so you can eliminate this second statement and the third statement is so it discarded the faith in divine avatars uh, avataras it took no definite stand on doctrine of karma transmigration of soul it all uh, okay so this is a uh, thing which is also very much correct so correct answer will be 1 and 3 and next question is regarding uh, ramakrishna mission and uh, arya samaj so both opposed image worship okay so they don't worship they don't oppose actually okay both didn't oppose so this statement is incorrect and uh, next one is both believed oneness of god yes and they supported polytheism as evident from suddhi movement suddhi movement is nothing but reconversion into this uh, religion so if we are talking about this uh, question so uh, ramakrishna mission which mainly formed by you know swami vivekananda so he mainly deeply a religious body but it was not like a proselyting body okay so unlike arya samaj so this arya samaj is a one of mission which mainly recognizes utility and value of image worship okay utility and value of image worship which mainly recognized in arya samaj right so because of this here we can say the first statement is incorrect and next one here is okay next one here is so although it emphasizes on essential spirit and not on the symbols or rituals both believed oneness of god and shuddhi movement was started by arya samaj but not this ramakrishna mission okay so correct answer will be two only correct option is two and today's questions of the first one it is regarding indigo revolt and next question is regarding revolt of 1857 and because of this revolt of 1857 that led to enactment of act of parliament of 1858 and this question is regarding this 1858 parliament act so try to read the statements you are given and try to give me the correct answer in the comment box so there is no need to marking you can give the answers and before saying this a newspaper pdf i want to make a very small announcement here so we are ready to provide your pen drive courses for entire foundational course for 2023 so this will be very very useful and we are covering each and every subject and each and every part in your syllabus will be dealt very very clearly so apart from this pen drive course so if you want to take individual courses you can visit our website and in our website you can go for purchasing of courses there you can see the three demo videos okay and we are offering a wide range of courses like a pen drive course and as well as a 
complete online course will be given so these courses are very very useful to clear your upsc for sure okay so please try to join these courses and if you have any doubt regarding these courses you can call on this number 8074765513 okay and one more thing here is if you want to get the pdf of this lecture you can join this telegram channel and the link of the telegram channel is given in description box and now let us have a look over our today's hindu newspaper pdf so date here is march 16 and this is our delhi edition i am showing on the screen so first article it is about wearing of hijab so i discussed this topic and you can see this timeline which is given here and next article is regarding supreme court stays telecast ban on this media one so actually this media one it is one of the telegram channel it is a kerala based news channel so already we discussed that union home ministry which mainly cancelled the security license okay security clearance of this media one channel and because of this here this channel mainly went to supreme court regarding this central government decision uh, of the security clearances of this kerala based current affairs uh, tv channel actually okay so here uh, here union ministry which mainly said that on basis of some intelligence report and some sensitive and secretive nature so they went for not uh, cancelling of license of this uh, media one okay so this is about this topic and next one is standard operating procedure under review after accidental missile launch so this is about uh, what are the standard operating procedures that we need to follow okay regarding operation maintenance and inspections of this missiles okay so because of this accidental firing of missiles which mainly landed in pakistan so pakistan which is mainly demanding now to have a joint probe so regarding that we need to go for reviewing of the standard operating procedures and if you come down uh, you can see one more article here it is regarding anti-lynching bills so anti-lynching bills are come up by different uh, states separately like manipur rajasthan etc so now ministry of home affairs in Lok Sabha, he mainly said that there is a need to get some clarifications regarding this anti-lynching bills which are come up by the uh, some states like Manipur, Rajasthan, etc. Okay, here you need to know about what are these anti-lynching bills. That is your homework. And leave this city page, leave this opportunities and leave this page as well. And if you see, you can come to this uh, states page, right? So here there are number of articles which is mainly talking about this Hisa. So Karnataka High Court said that yes, yes, there is a ban, yes, we can go for banning of this hisab. So one important cause of concern from my side here is, so I am giving you my personal opinion. So whenever hisab is banned means here, uh, here Muslim women, they will be not, not going to come outside for even education. So whenever there is no education means what happened. So next generation uh, women, they will be also not properly educated and women will not come outside with this hijab, especially some conservative Muslim families, they will be not allowing this and uh, girls, they will be not educated. So whenever the girls will be not educated means that will be leads to poverty and even actually there is one quote like, so if one woman is educated, entire family will be educated. So that is the importance of education for women actually right so nowadays recently recently what happened the women muslim women they are coming outside and they are pursuing education and even they are excelling in some fields right so because of this banning of hijab it mainly affects this life of this uh, of this woman of uh, especially muslim uh, muslim community and it is also affecting the fundamental rights of those women right so this is about this article and also here order violates freedom of religion so this is the thing which mainly said by this person and many articles which are mainly talking about this hijab and i think in tomorrow's like uh, tomorrow's lecture we are going to discuss about editorial regarding this hijab for sure and i discussed about this inflation topic and there is one article regarding this india's missile attack has underlined sorry state of bilateral mechanisms it has with pakistan for crisis management so here we can talk about this 2005 agreement between india and pakistan regarding this uh, missile attack so already i discussed that topic number of time you can easily go through this topic it is not much complicated thing and the next topic is about bharatanatyam i discussed and if you come to this opaid page so this article is talking about pakistan's neutrality and taliban's worry so recently what happened uh, one attack which mainly happened in this uh, 
and one mask of uh, Pakistan. So because of this, um, there is some issue that is going on between the Taliban and as far as Pakistan. So you can easily read this topic. And if you go further, come to this news page. And in this news page, you can see new Goa MLA take oath. Okay, government formation after Holi. So here you need to know about the oath of this MLAs who are going to administer the oath of MLAs. So if you are opening your Lakshmi Kant and you can see this topic in a very great detail. So apart from that, here one more article it is important regarding this Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. So your title says UK briefed on status of this Foreign Contribution Regulation Act curbs on Oxform says minister. So what happened because of this uh, Foreign Contribution Regulation Act it is in news. Uh, because it mainly cancelled the license of number of NGOs, right? So here, because of this, US which mainly came with the status of this FCRA curves on this OX form. So here you have to revise this FCRA topic once again. So we discussed that topic number of times. And if you move further, here I discussed about this uh, one religion concept of a United Nations resolution. And here one more article here is Supreme Court to rule on one rank one pension today. So here you need to focus on and you need to revise on this what is this one rank one pension program. So already I discussed that in our earlier lecture. And if you move further here you can see one article US wants China against Russia support. Okay. So here already you know that China which is mainly supporting Russia. And in this context, US which is mainly warning China against the US, Russia support because already US which impose sanctions on Russia, US and as well as some US allied countries, uh, they mainly impose some sanctions on Russia. So here if at all China which is mainly supporting this Russia means, so these countries they can also impose sanctions on this China. So this is the thing which is about this uh, topic here. And if you move further, you can see United Nations, uh, Myanmar's army com committed torture. So this article which is talking about Myanmar's military which mainly engaged in systemic, uh, systematic human rights violation and it also went for war related crimes and crimes against humanity. So this is a thing which mainly said by United Nations and even security forces of uh, Myanmar they are also responsible uh, for the disregard for the human life and they mainly use, uh, used some air strikes and heavy weapons on popular populated areas and even deliberately they target civilians so this is the thing which mainly said by united nations high commissioner for human rights okay so here you can also add about this rohingyas issues as well right and if you come to this business paper so high crude oil prices are unsustainable it is talking about high crude oil prices so already we we saw that in yesterday's lecture there is inflation that is seen in the market and this inflation level it is very very high and whenever there is increasing of crude oil prices the further it will lead to increasing of prices so it is one of the cause of concern and because of this high crude oil prices we can see there is unsustainable growth that may register in not only in India but also even in other countries and next topic is about China's lockdown spur supply chain concerns again what happened again there is a rise of this COVID-19 case in China so because of this it went for uh, lockdowns so because of this again it going to alter the supply chain okay it is one of the cause of concern because number of countries are dependent on this china for some imports and next topic is about mobile data users in india touches 765 million so this article says that there is increasing of penetration of mo mobile data that means there is increasing of people who are using this uh, smartphones and tablets uh, laptops mainly increased right so mobile broadband users in india they are more than doubled to 765 million and 4g data traffic which mainly increased by 6.5 times in last five years so this is according to nokia report okay so this is about this topic and next one is government approves production linked in incentive plan for 75 auto port firms so here we need to focus on what is this production linked incentive scheme and next topic is about it to release rupees 53,600 crore to states on GST okay so here we need to revise this topic of GST already we are discussing this and even in weekly current affairs uh, of economy servants are already discussed about this GST topic okay so if you have gone through that there will be no doubt I think so and if you go last you can see here this paper this paper is text and context and I discussed about the solar capacity right and this is a solar tree 
and the next topic it is about uh, accidental missile launch i also discussed this topic so these are the some important articles that appear in this hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much